welcome everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started today because we have a lot to we have a lot to cover and a lot to fit in. So take your seats. We'll we'll start the program. So this is a very special occasion, and we have a representative from the VFW Post 1272 and probably some other veterans, maybe organizations here today. And if you are members or part or veterans, why don't you stand and we'll welcome you with a round of applause for your service. So thank you. Thank you for coming. So this is a, uh, thank you for coming and this is really, uh, this program was sort of birthed out of uh, several meetings we've had back and forth with the Post when I found out that this year marks 100 years that the Post has been in Belmont. 1272 was founded in 1924, signing their first charter with about 16 comrades who uh, banded together at that time and decided to have a Post here in our town. So. A hundred years is a big milestone for any organization, and so it's really a, a great privilege for us at the Historical Society to be able to feature you uh, both in last, uh, last uh, month's newsletter, which if you remember, you're on the mailing list and you, re you should have received a, a, a letter about the post, and this really covered lots of the history and uh, personnel, events, um, things that they've contributed to the community, lots packed with uh, stories and, and little uh, ideas about the VFW over the last hundred years. So hopefully this is one of the perks of being a member, so please sign up today if you haven't done so already. But today is a little bit of an offshoot of that, that particular show because um, coming up to Memorial Day later this month, you may or may not realize that members of the, of the 1272 post go around to uh, each of these nine sites that we're going to feature and they have a little ceremony and uh, sh shoot a three round volley and have a little time of reflection and to keep those memories alive, to honor those in Belmont who have served over the years and, and the different branches of the service and in and, and the different capacities all, all serving on our behalf. So it's going to be fun to walk around in their footsteps through the PowerPoint presentation of the actual sites that they visit on the morning, the early morning of Veterans Day, before the crowds gather, before the parade starts, before lots of other activities take place. They're already worked, I mean, they're already gathered in position to go through the their ritual of remembering these sites. So why don't we get started with that in mind? And again, we're looking at their banner on their um, post headquarters celebrating the 100 years and the flags, of course, at our Veterans Memorial Park. Okay, so as I've said, we're starting at the, the, the foreign post, the Veterans Post, over on Trapello Road. Oh, before I continue, wait a minute. I want to acknowledge several people that were instrumental and critical in putting together this presentation. One of them reminded me because he's standing taking photographs because he's a photographer and he's not only a, pro a professional photographer but he's a photographer for the post. So many of the images that you see in the in throughout the presentation are mixed in are because of John Swisher's work as a photographer. Also, we have our own photographer, Eddie Lone. So why don't you stand at this time? And both of them have contributed heavily to the images that you'll see. And finally, I don't want to leave out Bruce Palm. So please also stand, Bruce. And Bruce has been uh, a great ambassador for the club and a liaison, of course, with me as, a, as far as the Historical Society, lending the, the content as I'm gathering the content 
allowing me to look through the scrapbooks and the materials that they've kept on file and also so making this kind of a program possible so yes let me let's so let's start at the post and see where we're going first so first stop after they gather and and, and organize themselves the first of uh, uh, monument is at the town hall and many of you may or may not recognize the image here now the town hall was dedicated in 1882 and when it was dedicated at that time there was a wooden memorial to the Civil War to, to men in the Civil War but I guess they didn't think it was substantial enough or appropriate enough so what happened is they decided to create a, a bronze tablet uh, to replace it and put that at the front door now you're seeing them here firing their volleys and it's saying that the tablet reads in memory to the men of Belmont who died to save the Union 1861 to 1865 now if you can remember back then Belmont was just an infant we were only incorporated in 1859 so this was very early on in our town's history and these are the men probably uh, that are real Belmont residents before that they fought from Watertown, West Cambridge, Cambridge, the area in the civil, I mean, in earlier wars. But here now we have our own Belmont group of veterans. So we have six men mentioned on the memorial that died during the Civil War. And just to put some context, which we're going to see, we're going to visit memorials that are to individuals. We're going to visit them as groups. We're going to visit them in lists. But in this case, just to, just, just to connect the, the, the humanity to, to these men, I'll just tell you a little bit about these six men. John Locke, he was born in a house on Pleasant Street. It's still there. His family, family owned a large market garden that spread all across that area. And so he enlisted from there. He went to enlist. I shouldn't say he enlisted from there. He enlisted, but the Belmont quota was full. So instead, he joined the 40th New York Volunteers and enlisted with that group of men. James McGinnis, another one, born in Ireland, moved to Belmont. He grew up on the land that, that we know now as the playing fields uh, across uh, near, near, the, near the high school along Concord Avenue. The McGinnis family owned that land at one time. And he enlisted in a, a unit of all Irish soldiers. So they had their own uh, unit, and he was part of that. William Benson, he came as an apprentice to a builder in Belmont, Lemuel Hatch, who did a lot of the homes around town, and he served in a company of sharpshooters. Albert Frost, 16-year-old when he joined. He was born on 307 Pleasant Street, uh, and he, he fought in some of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War, Antietam, Chancellorville, Gettysburg. He died at only 18 years of age after he had a leg amputated, probably from an, a wound, a bullet wound, and, and, and most likely from infection that resulted after the amputation, 18-year-old. Charles Marsh, he was a son of Mansur Marsh, one of the first selectmen. And he served in other battles further south, Vicksburg, Port Hudson, Baton Rouge. And he was in the second battery of light artillery, died after in his second re-enlistment, I mean in his second term. He enlisted for three years and then died after he had re-enlisted. And Charles Marsh, a brother, I mean sorry, Louis Marsh, a brother to Charles, he, um, he also served and his family, again, popular in town and 17 year old he wrote a series of letters which were very interesting and we have them as part of our Belmont Historical Society collection and they um, give a first-hand account of his experiences where he was going what it looked like what the country was like outside of Belmont because we take it for granted that people at that time didn't move around like we do now so it was a big adventure being sent 
sent south and being sent far away from home. And so he would pen and write and describe what was happening. I'm on guard duty today and how are the things in Belmont? I'm here with the Belmont boys, so there must have been others that enlisted at the same time. So it's really um, poignant to read the letters of this young soldier first time away from hand, you know, home and to see what was going on in, in the battlefields that he was in. So, so there's an example of the six people. They could have been your neighbors. They could have been gone to church with you. They could have been went to school where you went to school with. So they're not just names on a, on a bronze tablet or, or unknown faces, but these are former residents of Belmont, just like us, who left everything and fought and went away and served. So it's really a nice way to connect you as an audience to our local history here so that you do have some of these sites you'll pass by regularly and may not really uh, have any context. So that's what we're going to try to do today is, is put you together with these. So we're looking at Belmont saying the population of the town was around 1,000 at that time and we sent 147 men to, to fight with the Union Army. Uh, every man between the ages of 16 and 45 had to register. Here's a nice look at the monument now, unobstructed. So you can see this, this used to be the front main door of the town hall. We enter now through a, through a side portico that, that I'm sure that wasn't used at all for, for public uh, exit and entrance to the building. This is how you'd come up the steps, main steps, and walk past this monument here. So you see the bronze plaque with the cannons below. And just a little sidebar, th this little um, architectural feature that sticks out there used to be the ticket booth. And they would have dramatic um, plays and, and, and inside in the auditorium, the main auditorium. And they would sell tickets out of the little windows on this booth in the front there. So the, the plaque is attached there and very prominently displayed back then. Not so much now as you imagine, but so taking a look at that bronze plaque. Next time you walk by the building, you'll know. And then here again, we're, we're looking at members of the post on one of the mornings of Memorial Day making their rounds and doing a, firing off a volley here. So from here, they just walk a few steps down the hill. And how many remember this colonial style, yeah, some of you, this, this colonial style structure that used to sit along Concord Avenue side opposite the electric light department, probably in that area. The and that, the cannons, yes. And so this, this is a, a, you know, a nice view of that, probably during, taken during Memorial Day. So we'll talk a little about this structure. This was dedicated in 1943, June, originally contained 2,177 names of those from Belmont. And you can see they were hand lettered and stuck in little rows on, the, on this plaque. This is um, a nice look at the, at the monument and in front. This probably was taken on the dedication day. And I say that because seated in front in, in, that, in that particular dedication was what we call the gold star mothers, meaning that these are mothers of, that had lost sons in battle and they were seated in the front and they were the, the the ceremony took place and the height of it was they unveiled the monument by see these curtains were covering the face of it and so they were tasked with unveiling it by drawing back the white curtains you see hanging there on both sides to reveal the plaque in behind there so that's a nice look at what probably was the dedication of the original monument well that was outgrown pretty quickly and needed some more space. So al along the years, I, I, I'm, I'm saying that they, the, the four panels that were original were soon full. And so the engineering department uh, made two wings, which we'll, we'll call them, to add 570 more names to that space. And so that's what you're looking at, the full extent of the, uh, of the monument there, all hand lettered. The gold stars were used to designate those that had been killed, and otherwise uh, they were just listed as you know, in, in alphabetical order. Well, you know, all good things come to an end, they say. So in 1970, it was rather weather beaten, and as you can imagine, it was very high maintenance to, to keep this up and to maintain it and 
and, and uh, in, in the weather and the snow and ice and whatever. So it was decided that uh, they would, they would uh, incorporate somehow the names into the new library on Concord Avenue, which we'll get to a little bit. And so this was eventually torn down in 1970. So you've dated, your, those who raised their hands were here at least since 1970 to see this. But it was, it was a pretty prominent display. So now, um, just about where that sat, now today we see what's there. And this is called um, a, a monument to all the, the men and women of the town of Belmont who have served in all wars. And this was done in 1985. The selectmen approved it. The Allied Veterans Council came up with the design and the, the look. And you can see this is, is sitting near the flagpole, in front of the flagpole, and is there currently. And it's uh, talking about a, a, a memorial to all veterans. So we see the group here standing and posed there. That's their next spot where they're going to take a time to salute and fire off a volley here on this site, still at the town hall complex. You see the monument here and behind. And okay. So from there, we're going to walk just across uh, uh, through, the, through the underpass and take a look at World War I monuments. And this, this monument, um, a co committee was appointed in 1919 to, to start to think about what that could be done for, for the men in the Great War, the war to end all wars, as a matter of fact. And so a meeting was held, and they wanted to consider a permanent memorial to the men it had served. So we're taking another look here at a former, uh, maybe Memorial Day again celebration with some uh, ceremony taking place and s saluting at the World War I Memorial. And we're looking at what the design embodies the elements of a simple, dignified memorial possessing the quality of permanence, but with a quality of cheerfulness. Also a memorial that breathes the spirit which has inspired its erection and the sacrifice which it commemorates. So that was uh, at the dedication thought to be what this site would be all about. So we're looking at, again, several views of the veterans formerly, backside the more, and a little bit more detail about what's going on there. The citizens of Belmont who served, who designed the, the more, it was Bethel Granite. It's set on a slightly raised platform surrounded by balustrade and two urns, very, very attractively uh, decorated there and placed at the junction of Common and Concord Avenue. So altogether about 600 men, looks like from Belmont, became involved with every branch of the service and played roles in this war. So taking a look at uh, Memorial. This memorial has nine names inscribed on it. And uh, you see them listed at the top there. Uh, and lo and behold, after research was done, there was a 10th, it turns out there was a 10th Belmont man who was omitted from the original list of names. And so to rectify that, back in 2015, the monument was rededicated, and I know some of you attended that here in the room, on Veterans Day, and they added the 10th Private John Kamir to the memorial, so you see his name has been added to that, and they had a little bell ringing ceremony, and so all that uh, happened on site uh, to, to add the, the, the 10th name on World War I. Beautiful, look at the beautiful. This is, this is Eddie's photography here, stunning, spectacular view as we see. And I just wanted to share with you the inscription on the back face. The front face, which faces Concord Avenue, has the names of the men, and here on the back face. So, so nigh is grander to our dust, so nigh is God to man. When duty whispers low, thou must. The youth replies, I can. So you see, th this is the back face facing the Lions Club. So that's the World War I monument. Now next, we're going we're gonna to visit on our tour the Memorial Library, now no longer, I mean, it's been demolished, but it's worth mentioning here because for so many years, 
It was part of the ceremony. And more importantly, it was dedicated and conceived as a memorial to veterans. So when it was, um, you see here at the dedicate, when it was dedicated, you, you see the, the members of all different allied veterans groups standing on the front berm, as we remembered, we affectionately called it. And they're looking at the, oops, 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 oops we were, we're flipping too far ahead. We're looking at the berm there, and they're gathered to, to, to look. But the, the real centerpiece to the building was in the lobby. So this is, the, the if you remember, going entering into the, the lobby, the Belmont Memorial Library opened in 1965. And you see the, the five-member War Memorial Committee and Veterans Group is the one who planned this large lobby area as the memorial. And as you remember, all the inscriptions around the top and mostly this um, polished black, black granite stone. And this is talking about World War I, II, and the Korean conflict, together with some benches also dedicated at the time. So there's a nice look at the lobby and the names on that memorial. But over the years, um, the Vietnam Military Action Monument was also added. So if you can remember uh, that there was a separate plaque affixed to the wall also in the lobby with a listed of, list of names, eight names of men from Belmont that served. And in a real great then and now, and a shout out to Bruce again, here's Bruce, who I think was commander at the post at the time. Yes, at the time of this dedication, and maybe had something to do with it being installed here. It was, re it was done by a, a cut and installed by a, a local Nino Zap Zapponi, and dedicated in 1974. And uh, lo and behold, it was replaced by an exact replica which he's then polishing. Uh, more currently, again, three additional names that were s sought to have been omitted in the first plaque that should have been added. So they made those updates and changes and affixed that to the lobby. So we got Bruce in a, in a nice then and now, uh, looking at the v Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Also, um, fast forwarding a little bit more is, um, the Global War on Terror plaque that was also appeared in the, in the lobby again. And that was because, um, again, to keep up with, the, with, with fixing those. And this was um, Sergeant Curtis, Jonathan Curtis, who was a Belmont boy, went to Belmont schools, was killed in Afghanistan in his, I think, second tour of duty. He served in both Iraq and Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom and he died on November 1st, 2010. He was uh, in the infantry and they asked him in an interview why he had picked that branch and he said because that's what he thought of when he thought of the service, the people that the infantry re represented to him what the military should be like. And so he was a young man who, who answered the call, went overseas and unfortunately was killed by a, um, an insurgent wearing a, a suicide vest type of situation where he was guarding a compound. And uh, in, in intercepting him and not allowing him to enter, he saved the lives of those who were inside. So there's a nice uh, look again at, at the VFW post, doing a nice tribute outside again at the Belmont Memorial Library and people and the color guard. And this I threw in another little bit of trivia in a then and now, because I thought it, I just couldn't resist. And this you see, I told you that the library was dedicated in 1965 by the veterans. And so this is the photograph that appeared in the newspaper. And they are raising the flag for the first time over the new building. And this flag had flown uh, in Washington, D.C. over the White House, at, at, at the White House. And somehow it was... Uh, sent to it through a senator and came to Belmont, came into our possession. And so that's the flag that was raised during the fir final, uh, the first dedication of the Memorial Library. Well, recently, this year as a matter of fact, they had a decommissioning ceremony on January 23rd, and maybe some of you attended that. And the, f the, the flag, which I'm sure was not the same one, was lowered for the final time 
over the Memorial Library and presented to vet, um, veterans agent Bob Upton. So you see the, the first hoisting the flag and the last, the lowering of the flag over the Memorial Library. So next, just uh, further, a little bit further down Concord Avenue, another building that's, that's uh, been demolished and waiting to be re rebuilt is the James Paul White Memorial Field House. And this is another one <clears throat> that was dedicated 1948 in memory of a Belmont boy, Belmont High School graduate, James Paul White, or Whitey, I guess, uh, to his friends. And there you see that we're looking at the White Field House and a little bit of a yearbook insert of Paul. And this, uh, he was considered an outstanding scholar athlete, class of 1943. And this uh, appeared in the Boston Globe. They did a little article in tribute. I don't know the occasion or the reason for that, but um, they highlighted him as being a outstanding scholar athlete and, and, and taking a look at his accomplishments there in, in the cartoons. But he was killed at the age of 18, enlisted out of, out of high school at December 21st during the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, so uh, a tragic story, somebody that they had considered had a great and bright future ahead of him, but uh, killed here at the Battle of the Bulge. In 1947, interesting enough, a funeral at St. Joseph's Church was held for White, and he became the first Belmont hero to be repatriated, meaning his body was brought back and from overseas and buried here locally. So there's a look at James Paul White tribute, and I think we have a couple of other pictures, and, and again, um, write-ups that, that about him, scholar, athlete, gentleman, soldier, gave his life, that individual freedom and opportunity should continue and the people might gather peacefully and without fear as we were doing here today. So these are some of the quotes that were spoken at the dedication. And then we see the building, uh, construction costs, a an addition was placed in the front, con uh, making the T-shape of the building, so you're looking at that. Nice picture of the, the men from the post standing at attention there in front of the building. And then um, a final salute. And uh, this is a bronze plaque that was placed in the lobby of this field house. And this is the inscription on the bronze plaque inside. And I'm told that hopefully this will be reinstalled when the new building um, is, is constructed. This bronze plaque will be reinstalled. So you're taking a look at the athlete trained in the Belmont playgrounds, participant in sports at Belmont High School, instructor in the Belmont playground system. And he's representative of the youth of Belmont who served their country in World War II. So that's pretty fitting, meaning that he typified and so exemplified the youth of the town uh, who, who all went and answered the call and, and went into the service. So that's a nice final tribute uh, to, that, to the White Field House, which is, which is gone. The most recent, or one of the most recent now we're looking at is the Veterans Memorial Park. And so that's all down at Clay Pit. And you see the ribbon cutting Official dedication in 2019. I'm sure many, anyone attend? Probably lots of you attended that, that ceremony there. Yeah. After four years of planning and construction, and you see a gold star mother. This is Mrs. Curtis. Her son was Jonathan Curtis. She's one of the ones cutting the ribbon. So that was appropriate to have her part of the exercises uh, because of that. And now we're looking at the site in a planned picture of the site, artist drawing. And it has a series of polished stones that are in a, arranged in a semicircle around the main stone, which is in the, the center medallion, uh, and also for, for the Mendel Lusso. And also a, a brick patio as well, where people were, the community was engaged in perching, in the ability to be able to purchase bricks. They have names of loved ones and put inscriptions, and those were all installed along there as well. And, uh, looking at that site. Another uh, beautiful um, photograph, night photo, during the holiday. Eddie, Eddie took this one with a, uh, some kind of the decorations, beautiful. And uh, taking a look at this is an honorable remembrance memorial to all veterans and star of the nation the present day. 
whereby all visitors will enjoy an environment given to honor those who serve this great nation. So I think, you know, the park seems to be very popular. I, I, there's not a time that I, I go by there that there doesn't seem to be some activity. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a nice place to reflect and to, to gather and to take a look at that. And so here we see again the veterans who have, who have stepped up now to keep the tradition alive and they're gathered around this center medallion and, and making, making a little visit there during the Memorial Day rounds. And uh, before they head off to, at the same time, I think the same, same the same day, the Edward Teddy Lee Memorial, which is just out here, um, down at the corner of, I'm sorry, am I pointing the wrong direction? Um, this memorial mark was placed here at the dedication of the courts, when they redid the, the, the courts there on, on the corner. And this stone, we see it various seasons. And this is in memory of Teddy Lee. Again, it's, it's talking about his, his service, two tours of duty in Vietnam. He earned both a Silver Star, two Purple Hearts. He was killed in action. I think it was on his second tour of duty as well, uh, May 13, 1968. Posthumously awarded the Bronze Star. So we're taking a look at this rather new site. And then um, this is during the dedication, and then uh, this is at the memorial field, at, I mean, sorry, this is over at Clay Pit now, at the memorial there, where they laid their hat. This is his closest comrades and buddies, and from all over the country, they came to participate in this um, dedication uh, to, to, to their comrade, and it was very moving, and they laid their hats on the bricks, and those are collected and on display at the VFW, uh, that collection. So we see a high school yearbook pi picture of Teddy Lee, uh, class of 65. Um, so that's another nice look at him. And also taking a look again at the, at the great job done by the, the group here. And finally, we're going over a little further uh, in Waverly. Anybody? know where the, the site of this monument is? Yeah, a couple of you. It, it's sort star of... Star Market in the background. Yeah, Star Market in the background. That's a good one. So this is over on the, the sort of the delta by the tracks, where the tracks come out in Waverly. And a little bit hidden, but there's a flag, nice flagpole there in this mark. And I'm told this was dedicated Veterans Day 2020. And this honors uh, Brigadier General William J. Kevill. And he's an amazing, amazing story, amazing man. And quite a career, spanned almost about 48 years devoted to the military, started in the Spanish-American War <laughs> and, and uh, worked in various um, capacities, World War I, World War II, and uh, has lots of awards. He was the first commander of the post 165 of the American Legion in Belmont. He was a national commander of the Yankee Division, Veterans Association, U.S. Marshal, um, School Committee Chairman of the Board of Chelsea Soldiers Home. So this is all credited to William Kevill, and you see the rock and, and the, the plaque there, and then we see the men, of course, gathering at this site and, and paying some tribute to him. More, a little bit more about his service, and he's often referred to as the citizen soldier. We're talking about his record again and uh, how he how he served for quite some time. Uh, and I point out that this memorial, which also includes the flagpole, is said to be a replacement for an original marker that disappeared many years ago. Anyone remember that marker? Because I'm not familiar with that. But they said there was, this was, there was a previous somehow marker or something, I assume, at the site. And uh, this is a repl to replace it. So. Nice, nice that we are we're doing that. And another couple of uh, shots of the, the people from the post making a visit to that memorial over in Waverly. And finally, that gets us back around to the VFW again. So the VFW also has a few memorials, monuments, markers, whatever you want to call them as on their site. So I'm just going to briefly 
talk about those because those are in view. And you see what we're calling again the honor roll. So that's familiar. It's a place where they displayed the names of the deceased members in good standing at the post. And that stood there for many years. Um, so let's, let's see what it's saying. Yes, the World War II vets. Uh, and we're taking a look at the names. And I think they added several wings, the same kind of thing. They, when they ran out of space, they put a couple of wings on the side, either side of that, to keep, continue to keep adding the names. Talks about the original design and construction and the expansion wings added to that. And again, this, this was a picture showing um, in one of the newsletters, uh, the memorial was damaged in a windstorm and it will also be replaced. Is it down now? Is it, is it gone? Has it been taken down? Yes. So this is, this is gone now as well. So this was damaged and down. And I'm, I'm, I hope I have this information right, but they're planning a new monument, which this is the final design. And this is another polished black granite stone that will be set on the grounds in front of the building somewhere there. And it will be, this is the inscription that's planned for that in memory of the deceased members who answered the call to protect our country and our freedom while serving the armed forces of the United States. So a nice um, rendering of what we can expect to see being installed in by next year or what, any date for that to be installed. End of May, okay, so May, yeah, great. So that, that, that will soon be visible at the site. And then I'll just go over uh, quickly the other couple of monuments. And this is, a, you see this one here fixed to the stone. And this is to commemorate those who served our country, dedicated May 30th, 1933. Not sure the, the actual origin or history about that one, but that sits out front. And uh, this ceremony took place at the, at, the, at the post right out in front there. And there was about 300 who attended, a large crowd gathering. And this was Sunday afternoon, 1965. And you notice it's on the anniversary, anniversary of the assassination of the late president. So this monument here was installed to commemorate uh, that event and we see that it's it's being installed here and it's sitting next to the monument I showed you we're looking at the Kennedy 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 against the other one and they're laying a wreath on that Kennedy Memorial so that sits out in front of the building as well and I think yes one more here and this is sort of on the other side of the path and uh, again this is in memory of the member the men of Belmont from the Korean conflict and you see the names inscribed there, which I've also put on the side of those who served in that capacity. And that's set in the ground out in front of the, the monument there. So final look at the tributes paying and a nice uh, view of them out in front of their own headquarters at the VFW. So we've completed basically the round. So starting at the town hall, Civil War, making our way past uh, the, the side there, over to World War I, Memorial Library, down to the Field House. Then we go across T Teddy Lee, Kevill, and now we're back, back home. So that, that is what's taking place. And so finally, I'm going to leave you with um, just the words that I thought were fitting and the nice, beautiful photography of Eddie Lone again uh, down at the, at the the Veterans Memorial and, and the verse, lest we forget, is, is really the refrain. And this, and hopefully today, is an occasion that we can learn or, or be connected, more uh, engaged with our own local history. So the next time you go to these places around town, you can put some context, put some uh, names and faces together of all these people serving in Belmont and Make sure that these memories stay alive, not just the VFW, but it's for all of us to honor those who have served in our country. So with that in mind, I would like to call on members of the VFW. Bruce, did you want to come up? Because we have a real uh, treat 
Bruce has been a member of the Post for, for not the whole hundred years, but it seems <laughs> like it, almost that long. So I wanted him to, to, to come and, and to share with you some, some actual hands-on, um, some pictures and, and some, a little explanation of what goes on at these sites. So I, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to put that on. So I, I, I probably can't. can everybody hear me? I guess they can. I can hear myself. So let me get out of your way. Uh, first of all, I'd like, on behalf of Waverly VFW Post 1272, I'd like to thank Victoria, along with the rest of the Historical Society, <laughs> in, in all the hard work that they put into putting this program together. Uh, it's, it's indeed an honor, especially uh, on behalf of the uh, VFW and its 100th anniversary. Yes. Um, how much time have I got? <laughs> yeah, so, several, uh, yeah, 15 minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time blowing my own horn. But anyways, um, <clears throat> I joined the VFW in 1970. And um, um, March of 1970, in April of 1970, um, I was, uh, I joined the Color Guard, the, the VFW Color Guard at the time, which is, you might have seen a few photos of us in the presentation. And um, um, I was just uh, invited into a room and they handed me a uniform and says, well, you know, try that on and see how it fits. And <laughs> I said, why is that important? I said, well, you want to look good when you're participating with the Color Guard. So that's how that worked. Um, I am a Vietnam veteran. Um, I, was, uh, I was inducted, drafted in 1966, uh, served in Vietnam from 67 to 68, um, got out and um, come back home, joined the reserves for another 25 years and retired out of the Army in 1991. Actually, 1994, I'm sorry. Um, so that's basically how that that happened to work on how I got inducted into the VFW. Um, I had the honor and the distinction, still to this day, to being the first Vietnam veteran to be commander of the VFW wow. and the youngest commander of the VFW. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> and also the honor of being the, um, the commander during our 50th anniversary. Yes. Yeah. So here we are, 50 years later. I never <laughs> thought I'd be here 50 years later, but here I am. But anyways, uh, getting back to the Color Guard. Um, the um, Color Guard, arguably, is the longest and oldest continuous operating Color Guard in the state of Massachusetts. Amazing, yeah. Um, yeah amazing. I haven't heard anybody dispute that. So I have to say that we are the oldest and the longest continuous active color guard in the state of Massachusetts. I have a photo here, which you come up and you can uh, take a look at it. Oh, by the way, I want to thank our, I want to thank, thank our, uh, our photographer, John. This came out of, this is a, a little snapshot that I gave him and he reproduced this. The, the, and not only that, but we got another one here too, which I'll get into in a minute. This is 1955. This is the color guard in 1955 in front of the shack in Cushing Square. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. The shack in Cushing Square? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I recognize one person in this photo, but I really don't know. I may know the other people in it, but I don't recognize them. Um, in fact, I was in the Cub Scouts in 1955, and I, that was the first parade I marched in, in 1955. I have marched in every parade uh, as a member of the Color Guard since 1970, except for two years. The year I was commander, another year I happened to be on vacation when the Memorial Day uh, parade took place. So I've been marching in the parade as a member of the Color Guard all those years. And um, so this is 1955. In 1955, this is the this is the rifle that was used. I got it. Hold the microphone. Okay, I, I got it. This was a uh, 
an Enfield. An Enfield right, was a British design. Um, in 1903, with this, the primary rifle in 1903 was a 1903 Springfield. When the United States entered World War I, uh, we needed thousands more of service weapons. They decided that the, the British Enfield was the best design. So uh, we uh, built thousands of these rifles. They were modified to use a 30-06 ammo. Uh, that's the only difference between this and the British design. The British used a different, uh, different caliber. But other than that, this was it. This was our primary service weapon right up until the beginning of the Second World War, or just before the Second World War. And this was the one we used. This is one of them that the VFW used right up until 1976. And um, these rifles, this plus the M1, which I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, were donated by the um, Ceremonial Rifle Army, U.S. Army Ceremonial, Ceremonial Rifle Donation Program. Um, upon request, organizations such as the BFW, American Legion, and others could secure these rifles for ceremonial use. It's a permanent, it's a, uh, I'm sorry, it's a permanent donation, but the Army uh, retains ownership of these rifles. So if uh, the VFW folds or we don't need these anymore, we have to return them. So that's that. They, they supply us with repair parts for them, um, some repair parts, not all of them, and also ammunition uh, if, when we need that. In 19, 1976, we secured 10 of these M1s right here, which is right here. I'm sure some of you know what an M1 looks like. And um, there's the color guard. You can take a look at this photo after the presentation. There's 16 of us in the photo. There's 17 in total. There was one person who wasn't in the photo. This is, uh, this is when we uh, first got the M1s that replaced this one here. Um, these, um, this particular rifle, which is one of the ones we use today, uh, it's been modified. It's been, um, this is modified to, uh, uh, to fire blanks. So it's a, it's a ceremonial rifle. It does uh, fire blank rounds that we use every year. And we fire over 100 rounds at Memorial Day between the uh, memorial, the different memorials, the nine memorials throughout the town, as well as uh, the parade, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the ceremony of the cemetery. So that, that happens every year. I just want to say, um, <laughs> I want to encourage people to come, and if you allow it, pick this up. I can't imagine, I mean, my gosh, marching with it or even firing it. This is pretty weighty. Pretty heavy, but this is what you currently use and will be using on Memorial Day. Yeah. Yeah. So as they make their rounds, they're all commissioned or carrying one of these. And I know you had said that they were you originally painted white. Or was it these this were, one? White. These were stripped. I restored these about yes. three years ago, the, M1, yes. uh, the uh, World War I rifles. Yeah, and this one. But, but come and, and after we break, do come and, yep. and take a hold of that. And so can you describe a little bit, so you go to this ceremony around to each site, and is there a certain uh, order of things that, that happens or? Uh, yeah, the, um, what we do is when yeah. we uh, approach each site, uh, we gather, we gather as a group, and um, there's an opening prayer. There's a prayer of, um, of recognition. Yes. Uh, right after that, um, we have a, uh, uh, a um, taps are played, uh, either by an actual real person or sometimes it'll be, um, it'll be a recording, but we'll have taps. As soon as taps are played, then we fire our three volleys. We do a present arms, okay? Let me, let me say that again. We do taps, do the firing, present arms, order arms. And that's how that works. Then we move on to our next site. Next site, yes. So it's, it's a brief ceremony, uh, but it's something that we've done for a long time. And um, uh, that's how it works. 
Yeah, the every year, you know, you, you go around and make the, make the effort to go to all these mm -hmm. current memorials and monuments. So we'll drop the library this year, I hear, right? You won't be, we assembled there or at the Fields House, perhaps. I haven't heard anything. I, I don't see any uh, temporary yes. uh, replacements at this point. Right. I understand that when, when the construction is completed, yes. they're going to yeah. restore these sites yes. so in some way. So in the future, uh, you'll revisit yeah. those. Um, and you've I, added the, added the, ter the Teddy Lee site to your rounds. Yeah, te Teddy Lee site. That's the newest one. Yes, the newest one um, in Veterans Park. Let me go down there. And yeah. by the way, Teddy Lee, uh, he was a graduate of my class at Belmont High School. Wow. I yeah. graduated with him and uh, Donnie Ray as well. So uh, Donnie Ray and Teddy Lee graduated in Belmont High School in 1965. Yeah. <clears throat> back when I graduated in 1965. So um, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if do, you have, do you have questions for Bruce while he's standing here about ceremony, rifles? This is now is your chance to engage him. Do you have a question? Pardon me? Oh, yeah, I'm mentioning oh. Don Ray. Yes, yeah, yes, good. Yes, yes. Okay. But okay, so what we'd like to do is give you a little chance to engage the VFW members, but first we want them over, we have a cake for their 100 year party, and it's over here on the refreshments table. A shout out to all those gals who did a great job at making the refreshments uh, this, for this meeting. But I'd like to have the members gather there. We want to take a couple of photos and let you then cut the cake and to have some time to answer questions or come and, and look at this. And then we'll have a little brief time to visit and we have to have an annual meeting by 2.30. So at 2.30, those who are members can come back and join me over here. And we're gonna do a few little cleanups and administrations. But thank you, Bruce, and the other members of the VFW. If you can all gather there, thank yes. Thank you again. Oh, by the way, um I have been a, the, the color guard captain for the VFW for over 20 years, so I'm still hanging in there. Still hanging in there. And, and the, his, the Historical Society has been invited, graciously invited by the Post to follow along this year. So I think Eddie, our photographer, and maybe myself and, are going to meet, meet them and go around and take some updated pictures at all these sites. So that's what that's on the agenda for the historical society with the VFW. So thank you guys. <laughs>